Hey. Hey again. Hello. So, some people say, shit, I'm late, but this show is far to be over. Uh, now we'll talk more uh, with Pat. Uh, yeah, sure, Pat, Pat, you're staying. <laughs> Are you staying? Well, for, I, I, how long does the show go on? Oh, uh, we, we can go on uh, all night long if you want. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you want. Doing it, <laughs> it depends, it depends. But yeah, you know if, you, yeah if, if you can stay a little bit, that, that, that's going to be good because I, I want to talk with you. <laughs> sure. we, yeah, we, we talk a lot with Dan, so 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 yeah, and we didn't hear enough about you, so so yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, great. Yeah, sure. Actually, basically, great. basically, Danny should uh, have been on the show for one hour. Oh yeah, and uh, and it was like for three hours, and and it was really really good. It was right. good. And, uh, it was rambling, and it was good. And to talk about Pat. Uh, He's a guy uh, I met uh, in New York City a few years ago uh, and because uh, I've been to Otos, one of the cool bars uh, in Lower East Side and I, I think we just hit at the first, uh, love at the first sight <laughs> and uh, now every time I'm going there we always have a party and uh, yeah, if definitely. you're in New York City, go on a Thursday at Autos. Uh, he's, he's the best DJ in New York City, I would say. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. <laughs> and, uh, it, it, it's not the first time he said that. I've heard that for like three years. <laughs> so, so it's not for today. It's, it's real. He thinks that. <laughs> I completely appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, I've been, you know, for the better half of, uh, I say, 25 years now, I've been de DJing, you know. Um, I, you know, was lead singer in a band for 10 years. And that, it, it, you know, we did well for ourselves, even though we only made two albums. But we did okay, you know, it was a hardcore punk band, you know, street punk. And, um, you know, that was good. But I, after I lost the band, I, I was at a loss of what I wanted to really do with myself. So mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? After having the experience of working with three or four members that weren't getting along with each other, we know what that's like, you know? Yeah, um, that's no typical, good. This is a typical rock and roll story about how we broke up. Everybody's significant others getting involved. Yeah, you know, I know. <laughs> rock and roll, all of it, it tore us apart, you know? So uh, I needed something. There was something missing. And, you know, I had been DJing here and there, but I never really took it in seriously. But I was like, you know what? There's just way too much music out there. And then I go to these bars, I go to these places, and I'm like, oh, the music sucks. We need something. <laughs> so why don't I just play stuff that I like, you know? So I decided to really put a lot of time into it. Um, and uh, one of the places that I uh, DJed the most was uh, a place called Motor City. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was owned by these two girls from Detroit. And it mm -hmm. was uh, kind of like a bar that had like uh, all Detroit motor parts built into the uh, the walls and into the seating, into the uh, bar and everything. So they had that feel, like an engine feel. So yeah. it was really cool. They had a lot of, a lot of like, um, like greaser rock and roll type stuff, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, punk rock and, uh, you know, new wave and like uh, other stuff, you know, going on there. So that was, I did that for almost, God, I, Motor City for like almost eight years, you know, like DJing down there. And then it's been ever since, you know, all these different other places, you know. But um, I like the idea of being able to uh, bring music to the people, you know, especially stuff when they're like, who is this? Who is that? You got to tell me who this is, you know, because I'm constantly looking, you know, and I get most of the music from people who are suggesting people to people, people sitting around listening to music yeah. and they send me a link and they're like, you have to hear this. And, and, you know, I've been building my collection that way, just going off of what other people like, you know, and and hearing mm -hmm. and it's opened my mind to so many different things you know but it is a lot of fun and usually when fab comes into new york i'm like make sure you bring your records because you're definitely going to be there. yeah but uh, what you're saying here it's it really makes me think about fab because fab is like the same thing but it brought but in brussels and when right, he, right, he, right. when he comes back from new york 
he always have a, a lot of things uh, for us to discover and we're yeah. like oh yeah what what yeah. what's that and what what band is that and that yeah. that's that's really good that you have this connection yeah. <laughs> between you two yeah. yeah that's cool yeah. that's cool it's by, uh, yeah. i say we met by fate yeah, yeah uh, it seems like it, <laughs> it seems and, like you, it. and we made the deal with uh with the pat i think it was already uh yeah five six years ago uh that now when the bar will be open and the day pat is coming to europe he will oh, yes. DJ with me Ooh, uh, ooh. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know, right? You and know, I don't work that? there anymore, but the the bar is open. We'll, <laughs> I don't work uh, there anymore, but it's and gonna man, be open. That will be <laughs> from nine or ten p.m. till five six in the uh, in the morning. And when the customer's gone, and when the bar is closed, ooh, we're gonna do that. The best after keep on ever. The and, uh, that sounds so exciting. <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to be there, and you're going to be so drunk on Belgian beers, That's and it's right. going to be so okay. <laughs> I'm going to be your companion to thank you this day, <laughs> and I'm going to make you drink like all the things, all, everything. You'll see uh, yes. everything, but in Belgian yeah. colors. <laughs> Dude, you have to experience, you have to experience a photo after party. After party. Right. That's that's like the the things that that I miss more uh, in this COVID shit is the Porte Noire after party. It's right. like my life and, <laughs> and that sounds great. See, we don't I have miss that, that so much. Yeah, because I I've never been to New York. I never been to the USA at all. So uh, the, the I, I see New York like this place where you can party all night, like you can do everything you want, like it, everything is easy. And so, so what's what's your intake on that? It, New York used to be a place that yeah? really was a place to that you can actually call something, you know, like wow, coming. Uh, it would be um, amazing, you know, like uh, I'd say any time before. 1995 and back going back it okay. really like the neighborhood of like the lower east side in the east village was a neighborhood that was exclusively punk and hardcore goth alternative yeah. everybody who lived in these buildings were all this and they all worked in the clubs and they all worked in the bars and they all worked in the neighborhood you barely ever left the neighborhood ever you know and it was just so many like-minded and so much creativity We've mm -hmm. lost a lot of that, an unbelievable amount. Yes. Like, it, today it doesn't the, even, it looks like any yuppie neighborhood now. What, what is it? Is it gentrification or oh, yes. like tourists? Like, and, imagine uh, gentrification, but on crack. Oh, no, that, that's not good because we, we have gentrification in Brussels and I don't like that. I don't right. like that. I don't live in Brussels anymore. Uh, I hope. I will be living in Brussels uh, after this year, but uh, that that was a thing about Brussels that uh, like made me sick. It's like it's. Uh, I'm 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 gonna come back. I know. I, I I've taken uh, one one sabbatical year. Looking <laughs> for a new room in Brussels again. I know. I want to go back to Brussels so bad, but that's not the subject. And yeah, I see gentrification in Brussels so much, and that's that, I think it's everywhere. Now. Yeah, it's 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 uh, everywhere, and, um, and yeah, in in some New York, worst, yeah, I think it's about, yeah. Some of the worst things about gentrification is the loss yes. of creativity. It's the loss of alternative scenes. In yeah. fact, no, don't you think? Yeah. Because, yeah, but yeah, I think it it brings more hate, more power to the real uh, alternative people uh, because we are so tired of the shit going around us. Right, it bring us back to to the real stuff. And I'm uh, I lived in New York, yeah, in eighty nine, nineteen ninety one, all those, uh, and that was still. When I was in New York, people say, oh, now it's soft compared to the 80s. Okay. And uh, it's even 
surprising we talked about it already we didn't met each other yeah maybe we met we uh, maybe we've been to the we same didn't even know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because i saw the lower east side when uh you you were waiting for other guys to leave the pub to go to the subway before leaving because you didn't dare to lift to, to leave the place alone i was in brooklyn and i, I had to take uh subway and i was like okay i'm gonna wait people go to <laughs> <laughs> yeah great but man a little shady huh <laughs> new york was different new york yeah. was way freaking different yeah. but even now for the belgian people go to fucking new york city because and i know i want to but i can't oh. <laughs> i can't it's but very expensive are, it's very know. expensive you have to to stay in the place you have to have like uh, like you have to sleep somewhere it's fucking expensive uh you have to go out and uh if you take uh those uh Airbnb, uh, the food is very cheap in New York City. Is the food uh, very cheap here? Yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, the food but is cheap. Uh, compared to Brussels, food is cheap. Uh, and if you stay on Lower East Side, you can go to Otos, you can go to the Double Down, and you can go to Clockwork. See yeah, Bo yeah, the Clockwork. Mm -hmm. Boogie is watching, but uh, Boogie, cheers. Cheers. Uh, Speaking of. Speaking the of Double Down, it just place. opened up. It's Double open? Down just opened up a couple of days ago, yeah. Uh, Is it a club uh, in New York City? Or... Just Is a, a good club? Or... Oh, it's the only free. bar. It's the only punk bar in the world when you could see an uh, old porn movie on the TV. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah! That's good. I want to I wanna go there. That is <laughs> understatement. That is an understatement. The type of porn they play in there is crazy. Midget porn old s m films from the 70s yeah. 60s porn like uh all types of weird <laughs> you had me i'm i'm i'm, I'm, I'm a real like, porn fan yeah. <laughs> like, i'm a like real big porn, porn like, fan so yeah <laughs> it's the only place you can drink and smoke a cigarette at the same time uh during Watching the day porn? uh you're outside uh like, you have a big black flag wall i remember last time uh we were there uh we've been sitting outside uh the double down with pat uh drinking beer talking about uh a lot of stuff yeah I'm so gonna... yeah uh what company are you flying off when you go to new york city because i'm gonna check that uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's called cocaine airline uh no sorry <laughs> <laughs> I can bring I can bring a lot of uh, Belgian beers if you can uh, just uh, give me a sofa to <laughs> to sleep on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I mean, Fab, you let me know. You know, because my place is really small. But let me know ahead of time, and I'll see what I can I can arrange. Definitely, you know, because I may if, if anything I may have maybe a few places that you could stay. So it was I I am really small, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, we ask a flying company, not a rail one. Yeah. Oh, and uh, that's that's a little bit shady, knowing uh, your real to, work, Fab. But that's okay. And to show how New York <laughs> City is, uh, it's a very big town, and in the same time, it's a village, uh, because we're all in the same place. Uh, talking about the hardcore. Last time I DJ with Pat. He said, hey, I think the guy uh, DJing after us, uh, his brother is playing in a hardcore band. I was like, huh, what? I talked to that guy, Cameron. He said, yeah, oh, Cameron. yeah, my drummer, uh, my brother is a drummer from Sick of Idol. I was like, oh, okay. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, small world, uh, right? See? Yeah, in that bar, you had, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, Raven, always coming. Dra uh, Raven yeah. is from uh, Murphy's Law. I uh, saw them both yesterday. You had that guy who played uh, with the uh, Agnostic Front, uh, the guitar player. Uh, forget his name. You know the guy. Uh, John. Uh, Me I'm, remembering I'm, anything? No. <laughs> That's not going to happen. happen. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to play a song. Uh, yeah, here. let's do that. <laughs> I, I basically, it's doing. Uh, 
the stuff uh, he's doing on that show is talking about books or movie. And uh, a few weeks ago, he talked about uh, the decline of Western civilization. Yes, uh, I did. I did. And uh, one of the song Pat choose tonight uh, is uh, the decline of the Western civilization. Uh, which one was that? Which one? Because I, I know uh, I gave you like like four, right? Yeah, from the decline of the Western civilization. Uh, anyway, mm. I'm gonna play. We're talking about it right yeah, now. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Sure, sure. sure. Wow, it was so red energy, tape. Right? It was red tape from uh, <laughs> yeah, red Skull tape. Jerks. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, uh, right? yeah, and and so uh, usually I have a, a, a chronic. Uh, I don't know how to say it in English. I have a little bit on the show about cultural things around punk and hardcore. And usually I do uh, mu music film, documentaries and stuff. And I did um, The Decline of Western Civilization, the tome one, and the tome three, because I, I've i never seen the tome two. No, oh, okay. <laughs> that's a lie. And uh, yeah, on the tome one, uh, I saw uh, all, all, all that bands like Sickle Jerk and uh, Fear and uh, I, I I knew it all before. Uh, the germs was a discovery for me. I, I did I didn't know about the germs, and I was like, okay, <laughs> I've missed uh, all things about punk. <laughs> right, right. Ever since, oh. yeah. So yeah. And the guy I was searching for, Magnostic Front, was uh, Joseph James. Joe James. Oh, uh, gotcha. Uh, you know the guy. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, it's just like I mean because it is New York, you, you know, it's not it's not impossible to run into yeah. just about anybody anywhere, you know. If you're over at Clockwork or Double Down or over at Outer Shrunken Head, you never know who you're gonna run into, you know. I remember I ran into uh, one night I was uh, DJing and uh, Sniff Little Fingers came in, all of them. Oh, oh, yeah. nice. And they were just uh, hanging out, some of the nicest people ever, yeah. you know. I spent uh, half the night there with them, just hanging out, having drinks. It was great. They they played at the at the club I play. Uh, I DJ uh, here in Brussels, uh, Magazine Cat, Magazine Four. Yeah. Uh, and those guys were very very nice. Uh, talking about yeah, meeting people at the clockwork. Uh, you know the Michael Stripe from Ariam, just uh -huh. living next to the clockwork. Uh huh. Uh, I was with Boogie and I said, oh, man, that's the guy from Ariam also. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's New York City. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's it. And, you so, know, I, every time you talk about New York City, I wanting, I, I, I want more <laughs> to go more. to it. Yeah. You know, once this is all over, we're going to get to travel. Oh, yeah. Fun. I you know? want to do that because I travel all over Europe, but not in the USA. And yes, yes, and of course. So that, that's it, itching, that's itching. It's only, a matter of time, <laughs> it's only a matter of time before we meet each other. So. I know. But, uh, so you know, okay. Ash, uh, New York City is harder it's than uh, any kind of drugs you know. I, 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 wanna, I wanted to say that uh, I, when you... Then, <laughs> when you begin your, your your sentence, I was like, New York City is like a drug. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> but I want to go there anyway. <laughs> you both know Manu. Uh, yeah, wife. sure. The, uh, the Fab's first wife. Been, I, the first time she been there, I was like, I don't know if I love or if I hate that city. But I know I have to come back. That's and drugs. I, uh, that's that's drugs, yeah. And now uh, that's every drugs. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> we are talking about the holidays after uh, this fucking pandemic, uh, and the first place we think we like, we have to go back to New York, not for the city, but to see. for the people. people. Oh yeah. Yeah. The so people. Family there that can be uh, uh, all the all the gang at uh, uh, at autos. Uh, and it's all to go see Boogie. Uh, John, uh, I see Johnny was back in New York. 
uh, after Denver, now he's in Florida, now he's back in New York, talking about people. One day, uh, when he said about, you can meet anybody in New York, uh, John is working with, uh, he's, he's putting big stereo uh, at people's house. Mm. And uh, uh, told me that, so yeah, I was installing a very nice stereo at people. And at the moment, the guy from the Beastie Boys came out because that was the parents of that Beastie Boy. You know the story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if John Lee is listening, but uh, John, if you do, uh, log on uh, uh, on Twitch. Uh, come talk to us. Okay. I remember, here's a, here's a good story. I was uh, hanging yeah. out in uh, front of uh, Trash and Vaudeville, the, the clothing store. And uh, at that time, the St. Mark's Hotel on St. Mark's Street, yeah. Cheetah Chrome from the Dead Boys was, was up, was living there at that time. And he had come downstairs and he was really drunk and he was like he was like hey you guys want to go drinking so he said yeah so we followed cheetah chrome down to a place called at that time called the uh, 9c it was on the corner of 9th and avenue c and uh we were hanging out there and he's like i want to make a phone call got some friends to show up and guess who shows up to meet him there flea no why no 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 <laughs> <laughs> So I'm, I'm not even surprised. Why not? It's the, like the, the sketchiest thing. <laughs> if I if I remember good, I think that you have a crazy story it's about like, no, Grace no, Jones. No. You, you you're gonna tell it after that. Just, just go for this story. I, I, I wanna know. <laughs> I think you have a crazy story about. I think that was Grace Jones. Oh yeah. After after after, I wanna know the end of this story. <laughs> Yeah, the Grace Jones story yeah. um, at the uh, uh, Afropunk Festival. Uh, Grace Jones, Ice T. Uh, Ice T, I got to say, really, what I liked about him the most was that he's like, he, he, he was like, yeah, you know, his voice. He's like, yeah, I miss the punk rock. It's like, oh, you, know, I know. That was, you know, he's like, he's like, this is real punk rock at a big oh. festival, you know, and, and um, I was playing, uh, good, you know, like street punk at a, at a yeah. big festival that was pretty much commercial, you know, but it was real punk rock for these people. Yeah, and, uh, I, 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 I like him, but I'm always worried about uh, his true message. And no, I, it's cool. Yeah, and 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 I and I'm really, 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 really glad to to hear all this uh, conversation yet with the uh, with people about this stuff being just punk rock and I'm, I like him. I like him. He's good. He's, good. You know, He's one of the good ones. I mean, the thing was that it was important that I felt like I, I, I needed to do this to 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 bring to people the the realness of, of, yes. what, of, what, of what, what we do. Because I think people, they see just the surface. They don't, you know, in, in the commercial world, they, they see the image, the fashion, they see, they sort of flirt with it a little bit, but they never mm -hmm. really fully incorporate this in, into their life. So I felt like, yeah, like, I like the festival, mm -hmm. when I DJed a festival and that, and that nature, I gave it to them and I gave it to them. Yeah. Hardcore, you know? that, that, that's so what like, we said before with the values and the message and the connection. Right. That's what, that's what it is about. That's what it is about. And I am really glad uh, as, as, a, as a young punk rocker and a hardcore kid. Right. Right. <laughs> I, right. I'm really glad to have th th this message and, uh, and this connection to, to pass by. And that's really good. That's really good. Right. By the way, uh, the links under uh, are links to uh, Pat's Facebook and uh, uh, his site. Uh, you can go check all you know, the broadcast he's doing. Uh, you have some merchandising too. Uh, oh, yeah. It's yeah. a bit expensive. Cool. To send to Europe, but uh, we can arrange that. Uh, <laughs> yes, we have uh, if I some believe, people I believe, I believe the company. I believe the company that I'm working with right now that does my merch um, does do international. Yeah, if, if and uh, nice. Who, who could be interested? Uh, check with me, and we can all order together so that they, that can make uh, all the all the stuff uh, cheaper. Uh, so, and cool. you can listen to him, uh, if you like the show, uh, 
there's a way to to say thank you on a, on a site so do it because that's part is typically the example like uh, i said buy the uh, the album even if you can download it for free of king never die download fucking metallica for free but, yeah sure uh, rammstein and stuff like that but no the people who it really meant something uh uh pat uh dj page if you like uh if you like good i did them go just put a like <laughs> A, li um, a, a like is important. Uh, that's Go for it, guys. Uh, so that's something uh, we have to do. Uh, I just uh, I started a new uh, I started a new night, uh, a new broadcast, and it's called Hair Day, and it's an '80s flashback. Oh, nice! It's, it's an '80s flashback, uh, '80s style music, and everything that I DJ. Cool. But, uh, what we do is I we film. You know, I have one person come over to my house and, and a hairstylist come and they do people's hair. Oh. Like they just listen to music, they do hair, we eat food and we watch B movies, oh. you know, and underground movies and stuff like that. And you know, like, it's just this new thing that I, that we did. So it's, yeah, it's really broke, a yeah? lot of fun. I got like a nice like barber chair and like, you oh, know, yeah. mirrors and everything. That's to, really good. To make, to make it, I just thought it would be a good idea. So it's called Hair Day and it's really you fun. Know? I do it like once a month. You're you doing know? that by yourself, or that's Rochelle who's doing the hair? It's me and Rochelle, yeah. Rochelle. Oh, that's that's so good. That's so good. So yeah. so good. It's a lot of it's a lot of fun. Just you know, just hanging out. Let me show you something. Oh yeah, sure. Go for it. That's really good. That's <laughs> oh nice. Oh yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, it's funny. That's really, really nice. I like that. <laughs> but, uh, we're going to play a song because uh, I've been uh, talking to some people I'm working with. Uh, I had uh, Dan at the sh in a show tonight and uh, they were all crazy about that dog, dog stuff. So, uh, I'm going to play that video, uh, Who's the King, of course, from Dog Eat Dog. Uh, that's a worldwide hit. Uh, and yes, in our small uh, Brussels TV, we had the guy who wrote that song before. Uh, Dan yes. Uh, so let's play uh, Who's the King from Dog Eat Dog. And uh, that's also the time if you want to take your link, just do it. <laughs> I'm gonna do. <laughs> who's, the, who's the king? Doggy dog. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's crazy to think. I like the sax in that. Yeah, the guy who wrote like that, that song was 30 minutes ago. Was who that's wow. talking? <laughs> yeah, sure. Wow. You know. Uh, I like the sax. It's really cool. Dan is. Uh, uh, there was the Belgium guy also into the band. That's how uh, I met all the people from uh, Mucky Pup, then Doggy Dog. And uh, those guys have an MTV award at home. They had right. an MTV award. That's crazy. <laughs> uh, yeah. But so, I, uh, I mean, at this point, I just, you know, like, I, I cannot wait until all of this is over. There, there is one, there is one problem, though, that's happening here in New York City. And we don't know how it's going to turn out. Um, we, a lot of people are getting vaccinated here. Yes. Know, at a high pace. I'm actually going for mine tomorrow. Yeah, that's, my, uh, that's good. That's my, good. My, my, my first one tomorrow. But the problem is, is that um, we have now the, uh, the South American variant has showed up in New York. And uh, this is the one variant that they already know for a fact that the vaccine is ineffective against. Uh, the person that they found who has this variant did not travel. So he got it from somebody else who traveled in, which means that that person is still out on the loot somewhere, you know? So I don't know how it's going to turn out. I know that we, we've opened up to 50% capacity now and uh, a lot of people are out, you know? A lot of people are out and a lot of people are congregating a lot, you know? So I don't know what direction, you know, it's going to take. But I, I hope that people will just, you know, if they just stay diligent or whatever, then maybe this, maybe we can 
we can beat it, you know, through social distancing. We'll see what happens, you know. But but they do know that the variant showed up here. I'm like, I don't know. We we have we have that kind of uh, thing in uh, in Belgium because they say the vaccine was working with that. Uh, they call it Brazilian uh, variant. The Brazilian, the Breton, the, the, we have a lot of variants in Belgium, and they said vaccine was working. Uh, the only problem is here, uh, as I I have a hyper. Uh, I have high blood pressure, so I should be basically vaccinated uh, in the first uh, because I'm uh, over 45. Uh, first, I start with all the older than the other, but we're still waiting. Because we're still waiting, and I'm I am 30. I have a autoimmune disease, uh, like I'm chronically ill, but I'm not. In the, we have in Belgium that thing that the the people with the worst disease get vaccinated first. That that's okay. That's okay. That's like the old people, the people with the diabetes, with renal disease, and all the stuff. But uh, people like me and Fab are vaccinated second, and right. even second, we're gonna be vaccinated like in June. Right. Yeah. Because they are vaccinating like in a small, the, the smallest, the smallest possible. Okay. I, I I don't know what the, what they are doing with uh, with the with the vaccine. Even we we are priorities people, but uh, that's not mm -hmm. for today. That's for so I don't know uh, if you heard about that, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, in Spain. They try to make a concert. Mm -hmm. uh, people just acting normally. They just had to wear a mask. Uh, right. It was 5,000 people, I think. No, I'm not sure. There was a lot of people, uh, a regular concert, I would say. That, that was a, f a thousand, yeah, I think. Uh, jumping I think. on each other, but they all had to wear a mask. They took, uh, they checked everybody in. And after they checked everybody out, one week after, two weeks after, and there was zero uh, transmission of the disease. Really? Yeah. Wow. Uh, and that big hope uh, for the concert stuff. Uh, I, there was an article here in the European news about New York City, who, mm -hmm. who said that New York was really the, the city to follow uh, in those days. Because uh, uh, I saw Mike uh, from... Uh, He's from uh, Troy, uh, upstate, uh, and uh, he was saying that the concert will start soon. Uh, and uh, in New York, everything starts to open again. Uh, I, I saw that uh, uh, the traffic jam was starting again. Uh, it's, it's coming back. And uh, the numbers uh, of uh, transmission or disease are going down. Good. That's a Yay. good thing. That's a good thing, yeah. That is good news. So in New York City, so, uh, we do the spot. In Brussels, how how, um, how, you, um, how how far along are you opened up? Is it like uh, fully opened or is it like partially No, open? nothing, nothing. It was it was oh. a little bit open like this last month. And then... Uh, for the tattoo. But uh, yeah. to make the stuff, uh, from March last year to June, everything was closed. From oh. June to October, we were, we're close. Well. only till 1 a.m. Uh, basically, here, uh, all the bar open all night uh, till 1 a.m. Uh, and we have really to watch out. We had the cops in, uh, in the bar walking. Uh, the bar DJ, Arch was a, a barman over there. Uh, yes. And we really had to... It sucks. It really sucks. It's... it's, it's yeah. Last time, my DJ set had to... I started at 8, and uh, the bar was closing at 11. At 22, yeah, it was like, <laughs> let's, no, and uh, no. the bars, the bars are... Since October, it's closed. It's closed, it's closed, Since like fully closed. closed. The Everything, like the restaurant, it's closed. The tattoo shop, 
it's closed and it was open again uh, three weeks ago. And then they said, no, uh, no tattoo shops, that's not okay. And they closed it again. And here uh, they started, they started the vaccination, but everything is closed again. Wow, yeah. And we, we can we can go out, we can go nowhere. <laughs> you want you want to take a coffee at the coffee shop on your street? You can't. But something uh, American people don't know about here now. We have a bubble. That means we have a bubble. The, that in, one in, person. Yeah, in Belgium it's the strictest ever. You have your bubble, like the people you live with and you can see one other person yeah. one for all the people living in your bubble you can so, hug, you can talk with uh, other uh, for example uh, here i live with manu we couldn't by the law receive another couple if uh, you and alice uh, would live in brussels you couldn't come to our house basically if, if, if I want to go to see uh, Fab and Manu, I have to be the only person they see in one month. Yeah. A whole entire month, huh? A whole month. I, 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 live, I live alone. I'm, uh, I live alone. Uh, yeah. And if I want to see anybody, I have to choose one person. Just but one. It's so but, strict that people just break the law, of course. And um, uh, I break the law. I uh, I spend my Christmas with a couple. Okay, basically we should have been uh, uh, three, but we were four. That's wow. yeah. stupid. But four, we break the law because we were four. That's uh, it. Uh, and by you, the you, way, it is uh, a Belgium stuff. You can smoke online. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yeah, but that's a thing. But you, you can be if if I if I had a a person behind me like being yeah in school, uh, I would. Yeah. <laughs> I I would have an, uh, like. A, uh, but uh, the subway are open. I mean, a subway. Yeah, uh, it's like in New York. It's packed. Yeah. It's packed. So it's packed. You cannot go to a bar, but you can take the subway to go walk. That's really, the, the, that's really hard. That's really yeah. hard. That's fucked up. That's yeah. really fucked up. I mean, I always suspected that the subway is one of the highest transmission places. Yeah, sure. And the school. They fight to keep the school open here. Uh, but yeah. as it was, it was in uh, September. When uh, kids get back to school, uh, November, when the kids get back to school, January, when the kids get back to school, of course. Yeah, uh, I know, I know, I know. But schools, you, you know, I, I, I'm a teacher. Schools are, <laughs> schools are important. The, yeah. the, 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 the schools are important. We have to keep on giving and teaching to to the, the to the young ones and, uh, and yeah it's a it's a they need a social environment yes yeah. sure. they, they, but, they, they 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 need to be teached and to be in a, in social environment like yeah, you but, said but, but you you need uh, as an adult to tell them every time you have to put your mask you have to do that. You have to keep your hands clean, and uh, and it's not your fault. It's not your fault. It's just yeah, like I mean, it is, and you you have to do that. And uh, I, could, I, could, I could see the scenario. You know, like the yeah, they, you know, they say that they're maybe not too much at risk, but they love to touch everything. Yeah, I everything. know, and fingers and, and ears and in their eyes and in I their know, mouth. and 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 I, and I'm really sad every time I have to tell them no, you can't touch that, but you can. 
yeah. you just can't. And I, and I love being there and teaching you, but I love being there and teaching you. So just don't yeah. touch everything. And, uh, and, and it, it's, it's really bad. You have to keep uh, a, a channel. Uh, you have to keep a channel to, uh, to teach kids and to, and to touch kids because they, they need it. They don't need uh, one year of being blindfolded. Uh, of everything, they, they they need like the justification just to 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 be. Uh, I uh, I don't know. They, they, I mean, I they, totally get what you're saying. It's yeah. the one thing that we can go back and say exactly what you were saying before. Connection. Yeah, sure. <laughs> you we we have we have to wait. We have to get that connection and uh, in in all this. Covid shit, uh, and yes, the young ones are uh, uh, a, a huge uh, factor. Uh, tr factor and uh, transmission path and everything. But they are the ones needing this platform and needing context and needing uh, teaching and needing uh, being there, just being yeah. there, and. Uh, we, that that, no. that 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 that's really fundamental. Yeah, the kitty's very cute. <laughs> I have kitty. two kitties, so yeah, <laughs> they're gonna be like that. <laughs> gonna play yeah. uh, another song that Pat chose. Uh, you know, I love New York, but uh, yeah. do you really need to love uh, saxophone? <laughs> to, Such an eighties thing. Right? Uh, yeah, after that video, you can, I know, I, I think you know the story about all of that, uh, fear stuff, uh, on Saturday Night Live, uh, yeah. that story is absolutely crazy. And, uh, so that's fear. One of the, yeah. Yeah. we talked about, uh, flea, uh, earlier. What's very interesting about this, uh, is there's many people that'll tell you like, uh, Jimmy G, yeah. uh, um, uh, maybe even rat bones and a few people I know were sitting around talking about because they had went to that show yeah. when they were kids, you know, and that was right. one of their favorite bands, you know, and they said, they said it was exactly the way it, it was portrayed. They pretty much, they Saturday night said they Saturday night live said they would never have another punk band and they didn't have another punk band for like 20 something years. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy told me that story, uh, 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 in a bar late at night, he told me the whole story about that, and that was crazy because, uh, and after the show, all the problems they had, uh, yeah. that was crazy. So, that was uh, that's a piece of Saturday Night Live in the US, yeah. that's a very, very big show, and that's what happened. Uh, the problem is they asked some from to the New York City, uh, punk kids to be in a show and to act as a punk show yeah they didn't Absolutely. wait for that and there was a lot of damage on a set uh they should, they should have been prepared for that yeah you know? uh, <laughs> yeah so fear uh you don't uh, you have to like uh no, saxophone to leave new york city or I don't know. of course yeah there's nothing more in new york city than a saxophone <laughs> right and, uh, let's play this song for our common friend Raven. Yes, for Raven. That's for Raven. <laughs> that footage is so old, it's almost black and white. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost. That's, that's crazy. That's, that's the thing. <laughs> uh, to the people who don't know that story, they ask the New York Punk to act uh, normally on that show. And uh, that, that, uh, they, uh, they destroy a lot of stuff and that was a big mess. <laughs> they should have expected that though. I mean, it was the first like real punk band they, they really booked. I don't know if they were, were expecting it or not, or, but like, yeah, I mean. Yeah, the, uh, the, about what I saw in uh, the documentaries, uh, no, they, they didn't expect they, that. They didn't. <laughs> And and then they were like, okay, that's a thing. What are we going to do? Are we gonna accept that or not? And 
that was. I wonder if they, wonder if they uh, charged them with like, you know, for the damage. They tried, but uh, they failed. <laughs> But uh, Jimmy told me uh, they were not allowed on uh, any studio uh, from uh, Saturday, Night Saturday Night Live or other after. Yes. Uh, but you know the movie Blue Steel? That's a movie with Jamie Lee. Uh, Blue Steel is with uh, Jamie Lee Curtis. And that's after the, the comeback of Jimmy G. That's right. Uh, la la. Yeah. With, uh, with uh, Harley. When uh, okay. during the time when Ali was uh, was still cool. Oh, yeah, you're bad, but there's some people in the Lower East Side who are not so much welcome anymore, like Rick uh, Ali for Ali. Uh, mm. We're not gonna in this show. We don't we don't want to talk about bullshit. So uh, that's how it is now in New York City. They say mm -hmm. something shit about other people. Richter life is uh, wouldn't dare to come anymore in a lower east side. And uh, Ali is on the edge, I would say. Right. Mm. I see a tail. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, this is a tail. Hello. This is a face. Do you want a face? Yes, there you go. Did uh, did you play the uh, Legend of Zelda the the, the game? No, no. What's that? Did you play? Uh, are you a player? Do do you play oh, games? Oh, because you see my chair. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because I'm a, I'm a huge Legend of Zelda fan. Uh huh. Uh huh. No, I'm actually, that, I'm actually sitting uh, in front of my DJ booth. Oh yeah. <laughs> Because, I got, because I got this, I got this chair because, like, I was looking at it online and I was like, yeah. you know, what? it really looks like it's yeah. better for my back, you know. Okay, so okay, I feel betrayed, but okay. Uh, <laughs> you know the game GTA. Yeah, uh, yeah. You no, know, uh, I, I know. GTA number four, uh, the soundtrack. You can, uh, you could, you can play that game and put the radio you want, and uh, one of the radio is yeah, the radio. And uh, the DJ of the hardcore pen uh, station on GTA number four is uh, Jimmy G. It's and Jimmy that's G. really cool. And it's, that's cool. Uh, and yeah, that that's really cool. It's talking, yeah. it's talking shit about the metal radio and stuff like that. Uh -huh. uh, I know it is. It is really good because I I I played that game and I, I that that was like one of my first intake with the uh, with alcohol music and then like that was like what three months ago uh -huh. I, 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 I I talked with with him and I was like oh <laughs> that's you that's, that's really good <laughs> My heart is going like that. I don't know what to say. And it was and it was really kind and really simple and really 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 cool. Right. Really right. Cool. That's cool. And uh, yeah, that's really cool. Did you see there's a um there's a girl, I think they called her um Sweet Anita. Mm -hmm. She's a and you can look her up on uh, like YouTube or something. And she's okay. a gamer. And what she oh, does, yeah. she record she records her, her gaming. But the thing is, is that, and, and I appreciate this about her because she suffers from Tourette's syndrome. Oh, yeah. But she, uh, you know, she takes it, she's very lighthearted about it, and she's very funny about it. And her, her form of Tourette's is so smooth that you don't know when it, her, it, it begins or it, it oh, ends yeah. because it's, and... in, in, it's in between the sentences. And so she cracks herself up. She literally cracks herself up laughing. You know, can you can to, can you put in the in the in the chat we have like in the stream yard uh, like a, a link to our profile or something? So let me see. If I have. Yeah, so, <laughs> I can. Hold up. Yeah, while well, we check with the, for the link, uh, I'm gonna play another song. Uh, but ask uh, if but uh, the No Means No concert in uh, uh, Copenhagen, but that show was a bit long. So 
I cut it down to one song so called right. River. Uh, so let's listen to No Me Snow the River while we exchange some links. Uh, if you like crazy, uh, go see No Me Snow Live, you'll get crazy. <laughs> 